This video is going to show you how to find the distance to the epicenter after you've calculated the lag time. So for the first one, we're going to look at um, this first part is going to be review, but we need to find the lag time. So just remember you go from the first initial P wave that comes in, S wave, and we need to subtract the two. So I'm just going to use it as a number line, and this is one, two, and then remember halfway is going to be 30 seconds. So we're going to write this as two colon 30. That lag time you then need to use in order to find the distance to the epicenter. So how we're going to do this is you're going to take your graph and you are going to place your note card in the corner of the graph. And we have to remember that our lag time that we just calculated was 230. Now there's two things I'd like you to write on your yellow graph so that you have it as well. And that's going to be, we need to know what each of these lines is increasing by. Remember that this side here is representing time. Each of these little lines is actually going to go up by 20 seconds. So you can write that somewhere on the side so that you remember it, that each line is increasing by 20 seconds. Down here on the bottom, each of these lines is increasing by 200. So it's important that we have that part correct, otherwise it can make a difference in our answer. Now, in order to find the distance to epicenter, step one is you put the card into the bottom corner. You want to leave some space here so that you can see all of these lines, and we need to figure out where 2.30 would be marked. So here's two minutes, here's three minutes, and we're going to go halfway in between. So we want to be as close as possible. I'm just going to draw a line, and then I'm going to write 2.30 so that when I have other things on my card, this one won't be confusing. Now, another thing that I would like you to do is on your note card, it's important to remember a rule and that rule is this corner down here so I'm just going to draw an arrow is always has to be on the P wave line so I'm going to put that there to kind of help remember and what I mean by that is there's two rules as you slide your card this corner no matter where you go always has to stay on this line so even if I'm down here notice the corner stays on the line it can't move off of there the second rule is never rotate your card you always want to keep it vertical straight up and down now what I'm going to do is slide, and when I slide, I know that I should stop whenever the corner of my note card stays on the P line, and then this little line that I've made comes in contact with the S line. So as you can see, I'm going to actually highlight it here. If you look here, this line comes in contact, and then up here at the top, this line comes in contact. Now the final step that you'll do is you will just go straight down from the side of your note card all the way down to the bottom. From there you're just simply going to calculate or count how much that distance would be. So if I look at mine this is 1,200, 1,400. So it'd be 1,000 400 where that red line is. Okay, so when I go back to here, my distance from the epicenter is 1,400 kilometers. The second example we're going to look at, they're actually giving us times. So in order to find the lag time, we're going to do the S wave, which is hours, then minutes, then seconds, so 8, 10, 40, and then minus P wave, 8, 0, 6, 0. And we're going to subtract the two. When you do this, it's important that you just keep these in sections. So I'm only going to look at this section, then I'm only going to subtract this section, and then finally I'll look at this section. So my answer for this would be 40 minus 0 is 40, 10 minus 6 is 4, and 8 minus 8 is 0, so I'm just going to let that go. So my lag time is 440. Now I need this lag time to do the next part again. So rule number one, put the card on the side, leave some space. I'm going to add in that arrow again, even though yours will already be there, just to help remind me, and then I'm going to mark 440. So remember, these are going up by 20s. So here's 4, 420, 440. So I'm going to make a line, write it in, and 
and then we're going to slide. So remember, keep the bottom corner on the P-line, never rotate the card, and you want to be as accurate as possible. So I'm going to go up here. This is pretty close, but I'm going to just check to see if this one's any better. And I actually think this one's the closest. So from there, we're just going to go straight down. I go straight down this edge. I look nice and simple. This is actually going to land right on the 3,000 mark. So when I go over here, my distance from the epicenter is 3,000 kilometers. One thing that I always suggest, and you saw it on this one, is whenever you think you've got it, just go one more either way to see if there's a better one. Sometimes um, it gets close, but you might move one more notch and see that one's better. So even in this case, I can see an argument for 3,200 as well. So again, that's why it's so important to be accurate um, because it's going to make a difference in your answers as well.